Hi, everyone. I'm here today uh, with Nancy Bro. Hi, Nancy. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. <laughs> Thanks. Wonderful. So, Nancy, can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a hypnotherapist. I am based in Tracadie. Uh, so it's basically therapy work where we use uh, hypnosis as a tool to re-educate the mind, the unconscious, mainly. <laughs> and, you know, I'm so happy to have you on here today because many people... Um, you know, I've been doing, sending lots of referrals your way because the biggest thing with hypnotherapy is really that we need to get in contact with kind of this subconscious part, right? Kind of getting out of the mind and kind of into the deeper levels of, of healing. Absolutely. I mean, like we also need to take care of um, the conscious mind and be more aware of the thoughts that we have and how it impacts our body and our health. But the unconscious is like the big boss. <laughs> it's 95% of what's happening in the body. So when we re-educate that part of the brain in terms of, and based on what we want and our objectives, a lot of things can change and it can be very smooth, very natural and organic. Yes. And, you know, I've just been hearing such amazing things and I've had my experiences with hypnotherapy. So I'll just leave that because we'll have another conversation another day. Um, but I really, so this week we're focusing on healthy habits because we all know that when we start healthy habits, it's the beginning of change. And we know that one small change can start to motivate the brain in a very positive way. So I'm really excited to hear some of your, I guess, your top three kind of healthy habits, things that have really helped help you as you've been on your path of transformation. Wonderful. Well, I would say that the big like umbrella theme is mindset. Uh, to me, my health journey started with getting more curious and interested in understanding what was happening in my body. I would say that the, the key to my health was knowledge and mindset. So it all started with uh, a diagnosis that I got in Kuwait. That's where I used to live. I lived in Kuwait in the Middle East for six years. And everything changed when I set my hands, I put my hands on my lab report and started to understand that these numbers could indicate how I can help my body feeling better. Um, I started reading a lot. I also started joining communities online of people struggling with the same health issues. Uh, I have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, PCOS, um, and other little other things that comes with those uh, conditions. But when I started understanding that I could do things and I could First, I had to validate my symptoms because I used to do like a lot of people do. Oh, I'm tired, but I work a lot. You know, um, I'm gaining weight very fast, but, you know, it's in my family. It's genetics. Um, I'm overweight, but I don't eat well enough and I uh, don't exercise. You know, I would find excuses for a lot of things that were happening in my body. Um, but when I finally understood that there were reasons that I could actually take actions and learn about how to better serve my system, uh, things could improve. So that's one thing uh, that really impacted and still impacts my life, getting interested and understanding uh, my lab results so I can be an advocate for my own health so that my health can be a collaboration with my doctors. Um, what else can I say about that? <laughs> yeah. For me, I love that, Nancy, because it's all about empowerment, right? Absolutely. And so as we start on our health journey, we need to understand our body. So if mm -hmm. we don't understand, then how can we take the steps to make the right choices moving forward? And there's a lot of ways we can gather information. And here in New Brunswick, I'm actually really excited that we have full access to the health portal, right? So Amazing. if there's people out there that don't know this, you can go to Service New Brunswick, you get a code, and then you can access all of your lab and diagnostic um imaging on 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 the computer and that's a really yeah. great step forward for individuals that's absolutely amazing for the longest time in kuwait i had a spreadsheet and the first time that i met with an endocrinologist in kuwait um i had all of my lab reports on a spreadsheet i had things highlighted i could tell him like when my tsh is above above 1.5 i have high cholesterol when my ft4 is at a certain level i can't lose weight when it is i can lose weight you know so there's uh and and the the first time i met with him he was great and he actually trained in canada uh he was a kuwaiti endocrinologist he's I, I he really changed my life. Uh, when I left the doctor's office, he told me, thank you. I've learned a lot about the thyroid health today with you. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's amazing. So that's the, the big thing for me. It's knowledge, uh, connecting with people with similar health issues, understanding, reading researches. I got like 
health became the center of my life. I really wanted to understand and do everything I could to live happily in this body. Um, then, while researching things about thyroid health, uh, I stumbled upon all of the information about uh, nutrition and how when you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, they recommend that you cut out gluten. So I was, I talked to the endocrinologist about it. He said, yes, I've heard about that. He tested me for celiac first because he told me, don't stop now. I want to get that blood test anti-transglutaminase. I don't know if I say it the proper, <laughs> yes, the proper way. English is not my, my first language, as you probably figured out by now. Um, and then I cut out gluten and I realized that I had never had a uh, healthy and comfortable digestion before. So I cut out gluten and for about three weeks, I was strict, uh, strictly out of gluten. And I tested it by eating like Italian pasta and I bloated and I was so stuffed and full with like a very small dish of pasta and realized that I was intolerant to gluten. So and then I just started cutting out other food that were triggering my uh, my immune system also. Because they say that there's a theory about um, cross autoimmune reaction with the, I think it's gliadin and yes. the thyroid tissues. So when you eat gluten, it triggers, anyway, that's what I understand. Uh, it triggers the immune system. So the attack on the thyroid it gets greater. And I've experienced something recently with my lab report my lab results and reintegrating gluten that confirms to me that I I, can't, I should not have gluten, even though I can digest it now. So food and- uh, I was gonna say there is research supporting both thyroid uh, with gluten and with dairy. So we yeah. can get that cross reactivity with many individuals, yeah. Exactly. And I, get, I got a, a test to identify my food intolerances and the top of the list, very top of the list was dairy. So I cut out dairy a lot later, but uh, I've cut out grains for the longest time. I know corn uh, bothers me, soy, and alcohol. I've been I've I haven't had alcohol since 2020. Um, I don't miss it because I know that what what I do is to keep my digest my digestion comfortable and healthy. So it's not a matter of like oh I can't have that. Oh no, uh, I'm not allowed to have that. It's a matter of like eating food that makes my digestion comfortable. And I see every healthy meal as an act of love for myself and for my body. And sometimes I choose something else than the food that I that is comfortable. And then I think about like, okay, was it worth <laughs> the discomfort uh, and the bloating after? Was probably not. So the next time I just do it, I just take another decision in terms of the, the choice of food. So, um, and I also focus on the vari variety of food that I can eat. Uh, all, the, all the fruits, all the veggies, meat, uh, eggs. I've cut out eggs too recently when I did that food intolerance test. But anyway, I, I focus on what I, I can eat and allows my body to digest uh, in a healthy way. For the longest time, I did not know what it was. I was always bloated. I was constipated. Eating food was painful. <laughs> so now I'm very grateful for a healthier digestion and I enjoy cooking. I actually enjoy the challenge of food intolerances because it really it pushes me further in creativity and creating new recipes and exploring what's out there. There are so many great websites and sometimes on Facebook reels uh, showing different recipes. I enjoy that. And then, uh, it's an amazing way to reframe it, Nancy. Only from a hypnotherapist is someone going to say that I enjoy, you know, the fact that I have food intolerances because with everything, you know, life is about our perception. You know, mm -hmm. you, get, you get lemons and you can turn it into lemonade, right? Mm -hmm. So you've taken this something that a lot would see as a restriction and you say it actually gives me the opportunity to open myself up to new things. I love that. Beautiful. Exactly. It's awesome. And then there was one pillar of health that was missing uh, for the longest time. And it was movement. And I love that you call it movement and not exercise or physical activity, because I feel that those words are so um, charged in with like kind of negative energy very often. We, for the longest time, I was exercising to lose weight. And because I have a slow metabolism, it would take a long time before I see results. So then I would get discouraged and I would just quit. And I would, the language I had for, in terms of like, when I was thinking about exercising, 
was I don't like to sweat. I don't like being out of breath and I don't have, I don't like to be in pain. So why would I do it? <laughs> you know, for the longest time, that's how I would see it. And then I would try to get on it and I would say, I have to, I must exercise. And it was like, oh, torture. I did not know at that point that I was iron deficient <laughs> and iron deficiency. When you're iron deficient, doing exercise is literally like uh, torture. Yeah. But now that it is fixed, I am amazed at what my body can do. And I completely shift my perspective on, on movement because I used to do it to lose weight, which means that my body image issues were not healed. Um, and it was almost like a punishment. And about a year ago, uh, I got an ultrasound and they saw that I had fatty liver disease. It's something that I had a few years ago that I completely um, reversed. Is it how I should say it? Healed, basically. Uh, and it was coming back because now I have a new diagnosis, which is PCOS. And it's frequent that fatty liver comes with the metabolic issues that comes with PCOS. So I told myself, huh, OK, all right, went to a dietitian, And for the first time, someone... <laughs> told me now you must exercise and it actually stuck in my mind i've heard that i knew it but you never know when you will hear something that will actually have an impact and stay there so i joined uh, a center they're um, offering it's multi fitness in Tracasie. Uh, they are offering taibo uh, beatboxing mini trampoline uh, pound which is cardio exercise with um with percussion sticks that you kind of hit in the air and uh, on the ground anyway it's really cool and it really feels like a party and now i exercise because it's a privilege because a lot of people can't and i can and i i exercise because it's it's joy it's fun it's energy it feels like a party i exercise for my liver health and now i know that i also have to exercise for my heart health because i got my lipoprotein a tested recently and it is very high. I don't know if you want to just talk, tell people what, what it is, because you'll be better than me to explain what lipoprotein A is. <laughs> well, it's one of the key markers that actually tells you your risk for cardiovascular disease. Cholesterol, for the most part, really doesn't have a lot to do with it. Um, but apolipoprotein B is directly linked. And it's an advanced marker that I get on almost all of my patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and there are things that we can do with that number, but it is really important to know. There's a lot of people I believe that are on cholesterol pills that don't need to be on it. Uh, and, you know, any medication can have potential side effects. And of course they can have benefits, but it's a number I believe everyone should get tested. So a yeah. protein B. Yeah, well, I got, so I got that tested and um, it's, it's genetic, right? It's 100% uh, genetic. And, uh, but I know with epigenetic, it's the environment that signals the gene. So I'm like, okay, I'm very grateful that I currently have the lifestyle I have and that I've been working out for over a year now so that I can keep my health, my heart health uh, the best possible. Um, so yeah, it's joy. <laughs> exercising, exercising now is fun. And uh, I don't feel like I have to. It's not like a, a daunting task, you know? Um then the last thing that I would share is doing some inner work and healing um, body image issues. Because I grew up uh, in a family and in a society uh, where when dieting was trendy. So everybody was on a diet and we needed to lose weight and the body was never perfect enough. And I did those crash diets and realized that being thinner did not make me more at peace within myself. Um, there's one very important message that I had through a meditation. I would say a message that comes from the unconscious. To me, I called it just an intuition. Um, the very, in, within the first like few months I was meditating, I had a thought that just crossed my mind that came, that felt like it was coming from nowhere. But now I would say that it was coming from the unconscious. And it was, you've been trying all your life to fix the outside, to be happy inside and to be at peace inside when what you had to do is connect within yourself and connect to the inside to be at peace with the outside. And to me, that was the starting point of realizing that I am not my body. It's the soul, the energy, the consciousness that lives within this envelope. My, my arms are not Nancy. My belly fat is not Nancy. My thighs is not Nancy. It's what lives within. So that, that was the first shift I had. Um, and then 
it took me years. Uh, I did a lot of hypnotherapy, um, uh, therapy work. And the, the greatest, the most recent thing I've done is a year ago, I went for a Vipassana retreat. Uh, it's 10 days of meditation, uh, 10 hours a day in complete silence. And I understood a lot of things and was able to better understand, uh, my relationship with my body and the sensations uh and also let's say to pull the some of the last roots of uh, that issue so now that i understand that my body will always change um and you can't just get stuck in a certain body shape and hope to remain there for the rest of your life it will because it, it's just my body is different than it was yesterday and in a week from now it will still be different i need to allow changes to happen and understand that it will fluctuate i realize that you can lose weight and be at peace but recently i've experienced something i had never experienced i had a rapid weight gain because my my thyroid went uh, a little banana for a moment and i realized that i was able to gain weight and still remain at peace and to me I'm almost emotional when I say that. To me, that's the greatest example that the inner work that I've done on accepting the body the way it is, the, all of the effort and the time spent trying to, to, to connect to what's within, to finally accept the body uh, ha as it is, was worth it. Because to gain weight and still be at peace it's weird to say it that way, but it's possible. <laughs> and it's actually kind of a gift. Now I'm, I, I trust, I trust that my body is, there's some kind of a wisdom and an intelligence to the body. When you give it, when you give it what it needs, things can change. I used to sleep all the time, gain weight so fast that I would have stretch marks on my belly. Um, I was always like just all overtired, can't focus. At 30 years old, I thought that I had ADHD <laughs> and I'm not, I don't have ADHD. I was just, I had B12, iron, vitamin D, and magnesium deficiencies. I had a thyroid health issues that was not diagnosed here because we only do the TSH test and we we're not checking the FT3, FT4, and the antibodies. Plus I had that autoimmune condition that is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis and PCOS. There are a lot of things. So now I can be more compassionate and uh, work towards what's, what actions and um, I can concretely do to make living in this body always better. I think we can always, we can start from feeling good and getting to another level always. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, Nancy, thank you for sharing so much, especially the last bit on the inner work, because so many people as well, like as we're on our journey and you kind of, you touched on it. And this is what people will start to see as they start to make healthy habits, their life begins to change because we start with those things that we know. So, you know, we check our blood work, we, we get our nutrition, we get eating better, we start to do the movement, but the key is doing the inner work. Right? Exactly. And because we, a thinner body won't make you more at peace. It, it's starting from within. We think that this is to blame, but it's not. It's our perception is how we see our body with the glasses that we've someone else maybe put on when we were younger. And I love that because this is where it, it really does all begin. So if we, you know, what you and I do, we really help people to work on all those parts of their health. Um, but eventually getting to that inner work, work can make a huge difference. Well, it's the ultimate. And when you said, I loved it, that you said that you found the peace and because when we do find that peace, you know, there, there is a verse, I think the Bible says, you know, the peace that passeth all understanding. And mm -hmm. that is just when we can have this ultimate peace that it doesn't matter what happens on the external world, you know, the sky could be raining, it, it can be sunny, you know, you can have money, you can't have money. But when you have peace in your heart, mm -hmm. it is the ultimate gift and it's the ultimate thing that we all can have. Absolutely. <laughs> This is amazing. So, um, Nancy, we're going to have, you know, more talks in the future. We're going to get into things about thyroid health in particular, because that's been a big request from a lot of people as well. So, um, but for those that have been following our conversation today, or that would want to get in touch with you, what is the best way to reach out if they'd like to book an, a session, a hypnotherapy appointment with you? So, 
all of my communications are going through my Facebook page uh, and it's called Nancy Bro Hypnotherapy. It's in French, but all my content is in French, but I'm, I'm fluent in both languages. Um, and uh, so I'm in Tracady. We can do sessions in person and we can also do Zoom sessions. It, it's the same in terms of uh, potential results. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, Nancy. <laughs> You're Thanks welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for sharing. And I know people are going to have amazing takeaways. Um, I'm going to post a few of your um, of your reframings as well, because I think that's what we need as kind of our next steps on the journey. So have an amazing day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have an amazing day too. Bye-bye.